Hello everyone once again. So I'm presenting my third work, which is uh, talking about exploring vulnerabilities and attack vectors targeting pacemaker devices in healthcare. This is again a study that's been conducted by my students, Richard Cummins, Jason, Je Jason Jensen's, Brad Charnett, and myself, Tawhid Khan Muhammad. And we are all from the School of Information Security and Applied Computing, a recent Michigan University in Epsilon, United States. So this is another topic that we have, I would like to work on. These days I'm working on multitude of uh, research areas, primarily on cybersecurity aspect. So uh, my area is autonomous vehicle to work on the security of autonomous vehicles. And I'm also interested in working right now. I'm, I've just started working on the healthcare sector as well and how our healthcare devices need to be secured as well. Right. So before I can introduce the, introduce the topic, this is again uh, an, an important issue that whenever we are using any gadget or any medical device, if that's been connected to the internet, or even if that's not, if they could be hacked. So how this hacking could be done and what, what, it, what, what it leads to. To introduce the topic, let's talk about pacemakers, right? These days, we have a lot of heart patients around and we can see there's a good number of population who are, uh, they are basically relying on these medical gadget devices. And if they would be compromised, it could be a life threatening to them. And so at, at certain point, there are devices that are connected to via Bluetooth, via Bluetooth, and if they could be hacked, so they, it could have a very dire consequences if somebody's data would not be properly read or would be compromised, some of the sensor would be compromised. There are some common guidelines which all the companies want to provide. For example, we see patches every now and then for every software that we use these days. Sometimes Zoom, when we open it, it will start to upgrade. Similarly, Microsoft every now and then launches new patch. The Microsoft Chrome, Chromebook, Google Chrome also launches some kind of update. So, so on and so forth. So these are the some of the things that we can talk about over here, which we can say that they are uh, doing some sort of uh, security mechanism which are which does not which require to have regular updates, a strong incre incre in encryption algorithm, and they also have very strong require a strong authentication protocols. Enhance monitoring and detection system, and it also requires awareness and education for the people who are using it because we know that some of the people who are using it they are not very tech savvy and they don't know the consequences of if their application if their devices would have been compromised. Throughout this paper, we'll talk about some of the vulnerabilities in detail. And we also put the emphasis on the risk that we find out when we have when, when some when a particular uh, attack would have been individually compromised or in a mass. So that, that talks about, when you talk about all these stuff, that means we need to educate our users that you need to have regularly update your device, put a latest, and the, in the, the manufacturer, they need to put advanced encryption algorithms to transmit the data from point A to point B, rather than just transferring drop it, which are in most other standalone device are right now communicating over those drop it. This could have been, uh, require a very strong in, encryption algorithms. Similarly, these devices, medical devices, they does not have any authentic authentication mechanism. They can just like a plug and play. Connect with a charger, put the power to it, and then use it. They don't have any kind of authentication involved. So anybody could use any device. That's again a problem. Now let's talk about a particular problem which we are trying to address. 
we know that pacemakers is used to help to treat individual with issues related to heart such as arrhythmia or weak heart in which it's a critical situation where where heartbeat is not doing properly either it is below 72 or less than 72 or maybe fluctuating here and then and having some spikes in the normal flow per minute that means it has some erratic rhythm the purpose of a pacemaker that's been implanted that means through an outpatient surgery that means we want to induce the device in the body and then from there we can send some electrical pulses to the heart patient's heart in order to correct the rhythm so by the, using these electrical pulses we are from outside inducing some information so that these electrical pulses will again keep make the heart properly pump the blood and work in a rhythm order rhythmic order all of this data from the use of the pacemaker is stored by the device with a new technology today and can be transmitted right to the doctor from for them to monitor This could be done by using now the devices are connected to the internet. That means whenever somebody is having some kind of spikes or some problem, doctor can get an alert and based on that, they can try to find out if some person needs a critical medical emergency. If those devices are connected to the internet, uh, doctors will get the alerts and based on that, they can find out, yeah, this person is having some kind of problem or the device is not working properly and then it need to be replaced. And with the addition of internet or IoT based devices, like healthcare devices, it poses another level of challenge. That means they need to be secure as well. If, if they are compromised, they could be problematic. Now, let's talk about some of the related work that we find out. There's a person called Mary Asmo. Her pacemaker was compromised in the year 2015. And it's been found out that the device that's been installed to, on her, that it's been compromised and that's been implanted by Mortnik Cardio Messenger second model of the device. When she worked on this area and she find out that this device have capabilities that could that it could be implemented implanted to into human body and based on that it's it's become more vulnerable because it has some kind of aspect where we could be having uh, somebody could get into and then uh, exploit it. So the exploitation method that she talked about are three ways. One is improper authentication. <clears throat> Second thing is talk about unencrypted storage of medical data. That means the data that's been stored over the inner device, this has not been, is being secured in any way. Third is the credential reuse. If there is a credential there, everybody knows about it. It's basically like, basically like having a user, username and password, admin and admin. It's like as stupid as that. So if you reuse the credential, it, there's no proper way through which we can recreate or re reassign some password. Fourth is so, uh, <laughs> As a research that's been performed by Billy Rios and Jonathan Butts, and they are the some security experts uh, from Widescope and QED Secure Solutions. They conducted an expansive experiment ex examination of Medtronic's pacemaker infrastructure. Different companies these days different build this, those devices. So the, the the vulnerability which they found over there, they talk about that it has an enabled remote access that anybody from, from outside could access those devices. And second thing is, with having said that, when you have enabled remote access that anybody could like a VPN or maybe somebody could get a remote access from outside, perhaps it could be uh, as threatening as it could be a life threatening for somebody with those who are using those devices. The third vulnerability we found, it's called FDA recall and vulnerability in discovery. And this is one in the, this in the, in the year 2017, 
when the FDA of United States Food and Food and Drug Administration in 2017 identify a massive vulnerability within a Bluetooth pacemaker system. This was an alarming revelation that had emerged as the Food and Drug Administration uncovered around 500,000 pacemakers that were vulnerable to potential cyber attacks. And the severity of this discovery prompted an important and precedented action to the medical community. So the other one we talk about over here, FDA's plan in future to find out that how we can make sure collaborative initiatives in 2018 to find out that this, this research should be, uh, should be in a way that these research, the foundings that we are trying finding out over here, we need to find a solution for those, right? We could not just let them go. We could not like put a blind eye on those and they are serious concerns. So we understand that securing pacemaker require collaborative, collaborative effort among patients, healthcare providers and pacemaker manufacturers, each playing a very strong vital role in maintaining safety. Healthcare provider must remain vigilant in monitoring pacemaker functionality and addressing any issues Promptly, while manufacturers should educate patients about potential risk associated with these devices. So this FDA's action in collaborative initiative in 2018, which talk about that they find out the vulnerability back in 2017. And based on that, they find out that uh, they form a company called CyberMed Analysis, and it has a board in 20, 2018. And then find out that this is the company which will be responsible for finding the vulnerabilities in, in medical devices. Then we have uh, another uh, body, which is from MIT. They are also working on that in mitigation strategies from MIT. And they talk about that uh, these, uh, we understand that these have some potential threats over there on Bluetooth, on the Bluetooth of pacemakers. When, if we implement, implement some kind of external encryption, encryption devices, we can find out that applying those kind of encryption, we might make sure that this will be safeguarded. Right, okay, moving on. We found out, uh, and before moving to the result, I've been, I'll talk about a little bit more by research. Uh, then we talk about over here that if based on that, all the research that we find out, that there are some proposed solutions, which we have been proposed by FDA's action and collaborative initiatives. And then MIT research is also working uh, very hard, which is working on groundbreaking research and highlighting the critical uh, things to find out that how we can make safeguard these devices much and much, much, much and more stronger, right? We have to put, uh, put a, a in-depth look of Bluetooth vulnerabilities, right? Which is a bigger, bigger problem. Then we have to find out advanced strategies for mitigating Bluetooth vulnerabilities. That means we have to make sure that the communication that's been going on should have at least uh, RSA algorithm that's been implemented through which we can, we can, we can encrypt the data. But eventually, when I mentioned that RSA algorithm would have been used, we are talking about that certain things would be, perhaps it will add the cost to the device, right? And this become more unreachable for certain people, right? Now, to coming to the solution we talk about over here, what we talk about and the when we talk about such kind of issues, we, we find researchers who have been working in this area. So there are, first of all, we have to find out that, we need to find, identify the vulnerabilities, then find its security and impact on vulnerabilities. We find out real-world examples, how we can demonstrate that this problem exists. FDA response is quite effective in 2018, which is quite a breakthrough technology, but they're working on it. Then we find out certain in universities, they have been working on this area, and they have not been reached to a point where we can say that our medical devices are completely secure. It, it needs a severe thorough research to be done before we can implement say that yeah, this is basically something uh -huh. that we can say we can rely on. To conclude, we can say that vulnerabilities within Bluetooth enabled patient pacemakers have measured, have emerged as a major concern. And it has been highlighting the urgency for a strong cybersecurity measures to ensure patient safety and uphold trust in healthcare technology. With the inclusion and evolution of Bluetooth <laughs> connectivity, in these life-saving devices, while offering an important convenience in the real-time monitoring data transmission, there are vulnerabilities that pose a substantial security risk. 
through a deep drive and examination of existing research, real life incident and expert findings. This paper highlights the gravity of vulnerabilities existing in the paper pacemaker systems. Okay. I am going to um, conclude over here. That's all from my side for this article. And that's that leads to the third one to be finished.